Okay, now I want this to be, this is going to be a little more difficult if you don't pay attention. Here's what the test consists of. Ten multiple choice questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty short answers. Now that doesn't mean it's twenty questions, but there's twenty answers, and you'll understand that in a minute. And five true or false. So we're looking at how many total. We got a total of 35. That we were three points apiece. This test will be worth 105. Your biggest test so far. Okay. So here we go, Mr. Rogers. I want you to look in your notes, and I want you to tell me three statistics I gave you in the New World in 1650. should be really early in your notes. Three statistics I gave you concerning the New World in 1650. Everybody be looking in case he doesn't come up with this. Very good. Shh, quiet. Go ahead. Quiet. Start over. Along. Along the Atlantic seaboard. Okay, give me another one. So warships of the Royal Navy stood guard over nearly 1.5 million men, women, and children living in the seaboard colonies. Okay, and? And? Where else did the British flag wave proudly over? Besides the 13 colonies along the Atlantic seaboard. Anybody have that? Over islands in the Caribbean. Not the Caribbean, because that would encompass every island. Over islands in the Caribbean. So, by 1650 in the New World, the British flag waved proudly over islands in the Caribbean. The British flag flew over 13 colonies along the Atlantic seaboard. And warships of the Royal Colony... Excuse me, warships of the Royal Navy stood guard over nearly 1.5 million win, men, women, and children that were living in the seaboard colonies. And I guess we could add that the two major enemies of Great Britain at the time in 1650 were the French and the Spanish. Very good. Okay, Gracie, tell me who early French claims in North America were based on the voyages of. Early French claims in North America were based on the voyages of who? No. Early oh, French yeah, claims in Verrazano and Cartier. Okay. Now those were early French claims in North America were based on the voyages of those two guys, Verrazano and Cartier. We'll get to the others in a minute. Okay, now, keeping in mind what Gracie said, Hannah, notable French explorers who pushed up the Great Lakes into the heart of North American wilderness were who? Who were the notable French explorers who pushed up the Great Lakes into the heart of North American wilderness? Juliet and Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. How about Father Marquette? Did he not do that? Yeah. Yeah, he did. So, Joliet, LaSalle, and Father Marquette, oh, didn't they all push up the Great Lakes to the heart? Now, some of them, two of them, Joliet and Marquette, went from where to where? Um, River, to the Mississippi River, down the Mississippi River, to the Arkansas River. Where did LaSalle go? The all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So there's a little bit of difference, but they were all notable French explorers who pushed up the Great Lakes into the heart of North American wilderness. So, keeping in mind what Gracie said, excuse me, Buck, who was the man who established the first French settlement in the New World? First French settlement. Uh, Very good. Samuel D. Champlain. Very good. Naya Beth, who was the man who named the vast area down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico, Louisiana? Who named that Louisiana? Who was the guy that went down the Mississippi all the way to the Gulf of Mexico? claimed all that land for France. And he named that land Louisiana. Who did that? Uh, he actually was one of the French explorers who pushed up the Great Lakes into the heart of the North American wilderness, too. And it wasn't Joliet or Marquette. LaSalle. LaSalle, very good. 
LaSalle was a man who named that area we know as Louisiana, Louisiana. Okay? Okay, Taylor. In 1753, the French began constructing a chain of forts because they were a little bit concerned about uh, those wealthy Virginians coming in and claiming that land and subdividing it and all that kind of business. So where did they bring, where did they construct these change of forts from that connected what? In 1753, the French began constructing a chain of forts that connected what? Uh, they connected the Great Lakes to the St. Lawrence River. No. Megan? Um, 1753, the French began connecting a chain of forts that connected what to what? Quebec to Montreal. Gracie? Lake Erie to the Ohio River. Lake Erie to the Ohio River. Yes. Okay, Nick. When George Washington and his militia returned to the Ohio Valley to remind the French for a second time of British claims there, where did his men build? When? Not when. What did they build? Sorry. When George Washington and his militia returned to the Ohio Valley to remind the French of British claims there, it was the second time he was there, by the way. Remember, the first time he just came by himself. The second time he came with the militia. What did his men build when they got there? Uh, Fort Necessity. And what was the location of Fort Necessity, Talon, to Fort Duquesne? Just a few miles south. A few miles south. So make sure you know that. Okay? All right. Carly? During General... Braddock's march through the wilderness toward Fort Duquesne. What happened to the poor bugger it has been? Okay, and? And? Specifically, what happened? More than half of his officers were Okay. Be specific. All of his officers were killed. Half of his soldiers were either killed. When wounded or captured, whatever became of that poor mother. Okay. What happened to him? What happened to him? He got killed too. So, during General Braddock's march through the wilderness towards Fort Duquesne, he was killed. Half of his officers, or excuse me, all of his officers were killed, and half of his men were killed, captured, or wounded. Okay, Mackenzie, my dear. Half his officers were killed, and half of his soldiers were That's correct. Did I say all of them? Oh, okay, sorry. He was killed, half of his officers were killed, and half of his soldiers were killed, wounded, or captured. There's a reason why I did that wrong, but you'll figure it out. Anyway, moving on. Mackenzie, as one of the... Br okay. Tell me one of the British victories that began in 1758. One of the British victories. Oh, they started to accumulate. Oh wait, British Navy and land force under Jeffrey almost captured Pittsburgh on Cape Island. Very good. There's one. Give me another one, Brooke. Give me another British victory beginning in 1758 besides the capture of, of uh, Lewisburg at Cape Breton Island. And I captured Fort. Um, I have to know more. Shh. Captured what? Frontenac. Okay. How about another one there, Milo? Fort Duquesne was abandoned and the British uh, went in without a fight. And renamed it. Fort Pitt. Very good. How about another one, Mason? Um, Fort Ticonderoga, Crown Point, and Fort Niagara. We're all captured. Very good. And what was the last one, Blaine? They captured two key cities. Quebec and Montreal. Quebec and Montreal. What was the, what was the most important victory? The first one that, that Mackenzie said, the taking of Lewisburg on Cape Breton Island cut off supplies and reinforcements down the St. Lawrence River. That was key. That led to the rest. Okay, we talked at the end of the lecture yesterday about the influence of war on the colonies. So I would like you, Kylie, to give me one example of influence of war on the colonies uh, that was good for our colonies. Because mm -hmm. we talked about it yesterday. Oh my goodness. I was spending money, I was going to go, and there she goes again. Chantel, help out our girl who didn't watch the video that's very honest, which I appreciate. What was the question? 
Okay, at the end of the, uh, were you gone yesterday? No. no. At the end of the lecture yesterday, we talked about why the French and Indian War had a good influence on the American colonies. Give me one example of why it actually had a good influence on the American colonies. The colonial militia probably felt Make sure you get that part. The colonial militia gained valuable experience in methods of warfare. How about another one there? Bailey, what was another influence, good influence, maybe, that the French and Indian War had the colonies? Um... They learned that if they cooperate with each other, they can defend themselves. Very good. If they cooperate or work together, they can actually defend themselves. That was very good. Okay? True or false? Will? The colonial militia used black soldiers. True. True. True or false? Soraya? The Royal Army used black soldiers. False. False. The Royal Navy, or Royal Army, would only use royal soldiers. They would never use militia. They would have fight with militia. But remember that black soldiers only fought with the militia. Okay? Did they really want to do that? Why did they let them do it if they didn't want to do it? Why did they do that, Carly? They were short. Very good. Okay. Buck. Concerning the gain or loss of land, tell me what the English gained by the Treaty of Paris of 1763. All the land west of the Mississippi, except New Orleans. Oh boy. Okay, what did the French gain, Talon? Uh, four small sugar. Okay, so did they gain that? See, I kind of tricked him with that. What did they, what did the, contain, contain, concern the gain or loss of land, I would word it the French lost everything except four sugar islands and the West Indies. What did Spain gain or lose, Anna? They lost Florida, but the French gave Spain, New Orleans, and the territory west of the Mississippi. Okay. And what else did Spain get? Back. Back. From the bridge. Okay, very good. That's good. See, those are thinking questions. So make sure you be able to give those, uh, you know, loss or gains of land on each side. It's going to ask you. Here's what the question is going to be: Concerning the gain or loss of land, list the four agreements that resulted from the Treaty of Paris of 1763. So you're going to mention what land Britain got, what land France lost, with the exception of what Spain lost and gained. Okay, no problem. Okay, here we go. Milo, name the two major gateways into the heart of North America that France had secured by the early 1700s. Two major gateways. By the end of the by the end of, by the, excuse me, by the early 1700s, France had secured two major gateways into the heart of North America. What were they? One was New Orleans. Very good. What was the other one, Courtney? Actually, there were two that met one. Because it gave them control of the St. Lawrence River. So there were two. Quebec and Montreal. Quebec and Montreal. And then note in there, Quebec and Montreal gave them control of the St. Lawrence River. So that the two I'm looking for are New Orleans, which gave them control of what? The Mississippi River. And... Quebec and Montreal, which gave control of St. Lawrence River. Okay. Meg, name two European items that Indians traded their furs for near Montreal each spring. Um, and okay, give me two more there, Chantel. Um, okay, give me two more, Kylie. Um, Cloth and liquor. Are there any more? Spoons and knives. Blankets. Okay, yeah. So on the test, if you ask that, when we did the notes, we have guns and gunpowder as one. So it's exactly as two. Oh, you'll be fine. I'm only going to ask you for a couple. So you should have no trouble. If you put gun for one and gunpowder, that's a good question. I'll give you that. Axes and hatchets. Since they really are two different things, right? Although the guns wouldn't be much good without the powder, but it's okay. Okay, let's see here. Nick? 
How many advantages did Britain have over France by 1750? How many advantages did Britain have over France by 1750? Four. Four. Give me one, Brooke. Uh, colonies were established well. What's that? The colonies were established well. Okay, Nybeth, give me another one. British colonists outnumber French 23 to 1. Very good. Courtney, another one. Is this British or French again? This is British over France. Okay, um, most British settlements were in the New Okay, good. And Chantel, give me the last one. French settlements were scattered across the country. Okay. All right. How many, Soraya, advantages did France over, have over Britain? Five. Five. Give me one, uh, Madison. They were united under the same government. What's that? They were united under the same government. Okay, very good. United under the same government. Gracie, give me another one. Um, they could act quickly with their one government. Okay, very good. Shania? More support from the Indians. More support from the Indians. Very good. Another one, Carly? I the most powerful army in the world. Very good. The last one, Hannah. Hmm? The last one. Um. France tied Great Britain somehow oh, in their navy. They, they, they had a navy that equaled that of the Royal Navy. Okay, Madison. Madison. Who was the man who successfully tried, excuse me, who was the man who, was, who unsuccessfully tried to convince the seven British colonies to adopt an intercolonial union for the purpose of defending themselves from the French. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Hey Mason, give me two things William Pitt did after he became leader of the British government in the fall of 1756. He replaced all incompetent leaders with competent leaders. Hey, there's one. And he gave colonial officers equal rank to those who were the Very good. Will, give me one more. Mm -hmm. The British Navy. Okay, Blaine, give me another one. He moved additional troops from the Navy. And Keller, what's the last thing he did? They took the offensive. Okay, all right. Meg, tell me one thing Samuel D. Champlain did before he died in 1635 that it was of note. One thing that Samuel D. Champlain did before he died in 1635 of note. Of note. You know, of significance. Very good. How about another one there, Kylie? Um, he explored the St. Lawrence Valley. Very good. How about another one, Gracie? He built a set of Okay, and there's another one. He explored an area they named after. Oh, Lake Champlain. Champlain. Very good. Okay, Taylor. Well, wasn't that in St. Yeah, she like went to finish and just come. It's okay. She explored the St. St. Louis River Valley and settled an area we now know as Lake Champlain. Okay, Taylor. Explain the first settlements for the French in North America. Settlements. Now remember, we talked about the fur trade and all that, but where did people settle when they came? And not a lot of people did, right? So where were these, where did people settle and what did they settle on? What's like, that? Where they were? Yeah, what they, what they settle on. The French Yeah, the first um, settlements for the French in North America were where? They settled in farmhouses between Montreal and Quebec. Perfect, yep. Yeah. The first settlements for the French in North America consisted of farmhouses stretching from Quebec to Montreal, or Montreal to Quebec. Shania, why did very few people settle in towns or cities in New France? Mm, because of the fur trade. Yeah, what that, what, 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 explain that a little bit. Why would that have to do with it? Why did people not settle because of the fur trade? Um, there's so much wilderness that I like Okay, but you're, you're there, but think, think about it. Why? Because of the fur trade, it's true. Very few people settled in towns or cities in New France because of the fur, fur trade. Is, was the fur trade suck? Or was it, was it average or was it tremendous? It was really good. It was really good. So people didn't settle down 
It was a vast wilderness, and the fur trade was so successful that people took to that rather than settling farm houses. Okay? Okay. Kyle, God, I kind of ignored you today, so I'm going to have to really hit you hard here. Um, during this French and Indian War, what was the exact location of the empires of Great Britain and, Britain and France clashing? Where'd they clash? What was the area that they clashed during the French and Indian War? The Ohio River Valley. But, but more, not you're too specific. They did clash there, but what, where, 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 overall, where did they clash? Land west of the Appalachian Mountains. Now keep in mind that you have the Appalachian Mountains here, you have the Mississippi River here, and you have the Rocky Mountains clear over here. So they clash between the Appalachians and the Mississippi River. So west of the Appalachian. Okay? All right, Kyle, back at you. Uh, who was Sprint? Who? Which fort did William Pitt? Which fort was renamed in honor of William Pitt? I already asked that. I guess they had one. So. Fort Duquesne, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions on this? That's it. If you know that, you'll be in good shape. So what I want you to do now is I want you to take out your Roger Staubach notes from yesterday. We are going to continue this and should have plenty of time. And by the end of the period, you need to write down how many... Shh, quiet. You need to write down ten reasons why you think Roger Staubach is a good guy. Now, Taylor, I don't know if you can get ten today. You might because this is a good story. But if you can't get ten, it's on the website under Roger Staubach, the whole thing. Okay? What am I supposed to do? Hey, um, if you weren't here yesterday, we are watching a video called Roger Staubach and Football Life. And you are to the by the end of the period to have ten things written down.